Hi friends, hope you are doing well. Today we are going to start lecture 9 and I'm going to discuss the speed of sound. And this becomes important as far as aerospace engineering is concerned because it is something which is fundamental in the Mach number. And the Mach number essentially lets us demarcate the subsonic, supersonic, hypersonic, transonic regions of flight. And in many equations, the Mach number will also start coming up as we get into the higher speed flow regimes and into the aircraft which are flying sufficiently fast, such as many fighters and so on. I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now, like I mentioned before, the speed of sound will start coming into many compressible flow equations. And in many cases, instead of using the speed of sound, we are going to turn it into the Mach number. So the Mach number is essentially velocity divided by A, and velocity is the velocity of air on top of the body. Or you could see this is the velocity with which the body is going through the air. Now, looking at this quantity, M is V by A, you clearly see that this is a non dimensional quantity because V is the velocity in meter per second. The speed of sound is also expressed in meter per second. And therefore, M is a non-dimensional number. It's very important and very useful as far as aerodynamics at high speed is concerned. So we use this nomenclature. It's a very simple nomenclature. A is the speed of sound in air. So for example, if I have an air file section, there is a flow coming in at a velocity V, then the Mach number would be V by A, where A is the speed of sound in this system or at the point at which you are calculating the Mach number. Now, some nomenclature is widely used. For example, when V equals A, what will happen is M will be one. So if you put V is A here, you get M is one and that is known as sonic flow. So this is the flow which is taking place exactly at the speed of sound. Now, if you are below this speed, for example, if V is less than A, then from the equation M is V by A, you will get M is less than one, that is subsonic flow. And if M is greater than A, then M is going to be greater than one, that is supersonic flow. So V is greater than A is M is greater than one, that is supersonic flow. So very often we hear these words used in common usage and people will talk about aircraft which are subsonic, they'll talk about aircraft which are supersonic and essentially what they mean is that this aircraft is capable of flying in these flight regimes. That means it can fly either slower than the speed of sound, it can fly faster than the speed of sound. Of course anything which flies faster than the speed of sound will also typically have a regime where it flies lower than the speed of sound. Now let's talk about the sound wave and that's going to help us get some equations to calculate the speed of sound and then calculate the Mach number. So the sound wave is a thin disturbance in air which I have shown by this red line here. So we can assume that the sound wave is fixed in air and the velocity is coming in some manner like this. So for example, if we take any two points one and two before the sound wave, the values associated with this point one are going to be rho, p, t, and a, where rho is density, p is pressure, t is temperature, a is the speed of sound. Now, after the sound wave, these velocities are going to be incremented by a small amount using calculus. So this is rho plus d rho, p plus tp, t plus tt, and a plus ta. So these are essentially delta or slight changes across the sound wave. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to apply the equations we have developed for fluid mechanics between point one and two. Now, immediately we can see that we are not putting in any mass as we go through the sound wave. Therefore, mass is going to be conserved. And so I can immediately apply the continuity equation between point one and two. So the continuity equation would be rho A A would be rho plus D rho A into A plus D A. So A is the cross section at this point. So we are assuming a kind of constant stream tube which is going through here. 
Now this equation is going to be a fundamental equation which is going to give us a general expression for the speed of sound which is A. So what we do is we take this continuity equation and immediately of course the capital A, the capital A cancels out. It's the same on both sides and I get this equation here. Rho A is rho plus T rho into A plus T A. I expand this out so you will get one term rho A, you get the term A into T rho, you get the term rho into D A and then you get a term D rho D A. Now essentially from calculus we know that this term D rho D A is going to be very small. It is an infinitesimal term if we compare it to the remaining term. So essentially this second order term is neglected. So we'll just simply drop this out and also rho A and rho A will cancel on both sides. So we get the equation A D rho plus rho D A equals 0 or A equals negative rho D A by D rho. So this equation does give us some idea about how the speed of sound is related, for example, to the density. Now we have related speed of sound to the density. But we need to make some further simplifications. Maybe we can bring in pressure here. So again, we see that in that same system between point 1 and 2, no momentum is being put in. So I can consider that the Euler equation is applicable here. So I can simply take the value from the Euler equation. So remember the Euler equation or momentum equation was dp is negative rho a d a. And here what I have done is I have replaced V by A in the typical Euler equation. So recall the Euler equation was dP is minus rho V dV. And because here our speed of the air is simply A, I have rewritten this Euler equation in this form. And this immediately gives me dA is minus dP by rho A. Now what I do is that I go back to my equation here from the continuity equation. And I write this out as A is minus rho. And then I take the value of dA from the Euler equation and I substitute it in the equation I had obtained from continuity. So once I do that, I get this equation here. Now in this equation, there is a cancellation of these two rows. I can take this A to the left hand side. So I get the A square term. And so I get A square is dP by d rho. And immediately I can take the square root and I can get A is root dP by d rho. So this equation now links the speed of sound which things which we are familiar with. For example, the pressure and density of air. So now we are going to do something else. We are going to further simplify whatever we have obtained. And for that we are going to invoke isentropic flow. Now recall that isentropic flow means that no heat is going in or coming out of the system. So in this case we see that's happening because the air is simply going through the sound wave and we will also assume no friction is present here. So essentially we do not have any body in the vicinity of this problem so we can assume that. Also we clearly see that this is high speed flow. We are talking of flow at the speed of sound. So certainly compressibility effects are going to be there and isentropic flow equation can be used. So then we use the isentropic relation that is P is C rho to the power gamma. Remember we derived in a previous lecture P by rho gamma is constant across the isentropic flow system. So this equation holds. And if we write it in this form, we immediately are able to calculate dP by d rho from basic calculus. So recall in calculus, rho gamma becomes gamma, rho to the power gamma minus 1. And then I further simplify this here. I bring in the value of C as P by rho gamma and I get this equation here, gamma P by rho. So essentially what the invocation of isentropic flow has let me do is that it has let me express this derivative in a simple form which can actually be calculated if I know the point values of P and rho. Of course I know gamma is 1.4 for air so I can immediately write this formula A is root dP by d rho. This was the general formula 
once we invoked isentropic flow, we got this formula here. So remember the general formula essentially came to us from the Euler equation and the momentum equation. And once we invoked isentropic flow, we got this equation here. So that's where your thermodynamics comes in. Your gamma came into the picture. Essentially, gamma represents air or whichever gas you are currently in. If you are on a different planet, you may have to consider the gamma for that planet or satellite where you are in. So this equation is very important. It's good to take a good look at this equation. We see that the derivative term got deciphered through isentropic flow and got simplified. Also, since we know that these values such as P and rho are all point properties in the system, keep in mind that sound is also going to be a point property. So whichever point you are at, you need to calculate the P and rho value at that point and then evaluate the value A. That's going to be the point property or the speed of sound at that point. Now we can get a further simplification which is often required and which at least I find very interesting. And the, uh, the simplification comes from using the fact that air is a perfect gas. Therefore, P is rho RT, our equation of state. And therefore, this gamma P by rho term becomes simpler. I simply substitute P is rho RT in this equation. And so I immediately get A is root gamma RT because there is a cancellation of rho or the density. So again, this is another very nice looking equation. I have put it in this yellow box here. And you can see now that if I have the temperature at a point, I of course know the value of gamma and R for air. I can immediately calculate the speed of sound at that point by only knowing temperature. So at least to me, this was something which doesn't come out from intuition that the speed of sound would be related to temperature. But now that you know thermodynamics, you know that the source of this whole thing is coming from some of the thermodynamics we have considered, especially in terms of isentropic flow. So let's get some physical feel about this number. So let us look at the standard sea level condition where temperature is 288.16 Kelvin. We simply plug in this value into our formula. So we get A is root gamma RT. That becomes 1.4 into 287 into 288.16. And I get 340.268553 meter per second. I just put all the decimal places which come out here. And in general, we do not need to use this big number. This is just for our personal excitement. So what we actually use is A is 340.3 meter per second if we round it off. So approximately 340 meter per second is the speed of sound. We can use that here. And do remember that temperature must always be in Kelvin. So that's something which is very important. Some neophyte students sometimes put centigrade values here that gives them completely wrong values of the speed of sound. So always remember to use Kelvin values here at 288.16. So now that we know the speed of sound, it's very easy for us to calculate the Mach number. So Mach number, remember, was defined as velocity of the body divided by root gamma RT, which is the speed of sound, so divided by A. And so immediately, if we know the velocity at a point, we know the temperature at a point, we can calculate the Mach number associated with this point. Now, Mach number values between 0.8 and 1.2, these are typically known as transonic flow regions. And Mach number value greater than 5 is also known as hypersonic flow. Now, typically, if you take many of the civilian transports, they actually end up flying somewhere in the transonic flow region that is somewhere at 0.85 or 0.9 or nearby that. And so transonic flow is actually very important. It has certain special properties. Of course, the flow is compressible. Mach number is going to be important here. It is generally something which we need to consider in all these transonic flow situations. Now, M is greater than 5 is hypersonic flow. That's generally something which happens in certain missiles and certain 
weapons which are created which tend to move at this very high speed so it's something which is an active area of research and that's something we'll discuss later in the course very briefly so today's class you learned a lot and let's summarize some of the things we learned so we figured out that the speed of sound is going to be a very important parameter in our subject and so the speed of sound is fundamentally defined as root of dp by d rho this equation essentially came from continuity and momentum equation then we applied the isentropic condition to this equation and we got root gamma p by rho where gamma is from air the ratio of the specific heats it's 1.4 now we invoke the equation of state and therefore we got a is root gamma rt so again here gamma r are the properties of the gas you are currently in t is the temperature in kelvin finally we saw that there is a very important non-dimensional parameter called the Mach number which is also a similarity parameter we'll discuss some of aspects of that later so Mach number is v by root gamma rt which is v by a so it is the velocity of the body divided by the speed of sound so do remember that Mach number may change depending on your temperature also. Now, Mach number is used to classify many flows and many aircraft also. So, subsonic is Mach number less than 1, sonic is Mach number equal to 1, supersonic is Mach number greater than 1, transonic is Mach number between 0.8 and 1.2, and hypersonic is Mach number greater than 5. So that was the lecture for today where we realized the importance of certain things such as the speed of sound and Mach number for classifying various aircraft and aerodynamic flows in general. And so this will help us to get a lot of good idea about many aircraft which are out there. So for example, if we take many fighters, they always need to fly at supersonic speeds because one of the requirements is that they move very fast and do their mission however if we take aircraft such as trainers they are considered to be subsonic because essentially you are training new pilots and so subsonic is good enough for them now most civilian aircraft they try to optimize the trade-off between high speed flight and between the cost so issues such as drag and so on are involved when you are in the civilian aspect of life money is more important to you than when you are in the military aspect of life so essentially most aircraft fly at transonic flow and so these are certain things which are always taking place there are attempts to develop civilian aircraft which are supersonic so that again has become important for civilians who want to fly pretty fast for example they want to fly between two continents across the atlantic or pacific then a supersonic civilian aircraft would become useful and of course hypersonic civilian aircrafts are also possible but the main problem is going to be the cost of such aircraft so again there is always a trade-off between the cost and between the performance which you get from a typical flight vehicle so i'll end this lecture here and i will see you in my next lecture where we'll continue with wind tunnels and different pieces of equipment or instruments which are there, which are important as far as aerospace is concerned, such as the pitted tube, the pitted static tube, the mark meter, and so on. I'll end this video now, and I will see you in my next video. See you soon.